good evening and warm greeting to all of you present here now at this juncture i am a mahalakshmi department of science st joseph college of engineering would like to thank each and every one of you for being here with us today first and above all i thank the lord almighty for making this fdp a great success i happily extend my heartfelt gratitude to our chairman st joseph group of institution dr b babu manohar sir for his guidance in making this fdp a resound success i take this opportunity to thank our beloved managing director mrs s jessi priya madam and director mr b sachi shekhar sir for supporting us in all the way they can i would like to acknowledge my sincere thanks to our respected principal dr vaddi seshagiri rao sir dean dr b parvada vadini ma'am for always supporting us in all we do our head of the department have been encouraging and very supportive throughout the planning and implementation of this fdp we as a team would like to thankful for the convener dr v n nandini devi ma'am uh, it's uh, it's my great privilege to welcome you the most valuable chief guest dr v ganesh to this grand 3 day international fdp program with a joyful heart it is a great honor for me to welcome you sir to all the faculty here with us today your participation as educator is greatly needed to enrich the life of many students thank you all for the supporting and guidance i am super excited to introduce our resource person dr v ganesh principal scientist at csar central electrochemical research institute called as sigri located in karaikudi Uh, coming to his education profile he received a gold medal in ug and in pg as well he did his master in chemistry from american college madurai and his phd in raman research institute bangalore and post doctor fellowship in U uh, university of edinburgh scotland uk he had uh, made a mark in the field of biosensor bioelectrochemical bioelectrocatalysis and bioinorganic chemistry overall he has about 85 publications in international reputed journals and contributed two book chapters uh, he has re uh, represented as a prestigious csir in scientist award in chemical science for the year 2014 his sincerity and dedication to duty made him to receive pudhiya thalamurai nambikka nachathiram award for science and technology for the year 2015 in addition to the golden jubilee eng scientist award for the year 2015 he has delivered many invited lectures across india and in other countries like japan canada uk he has uh, completed nine sponsored projects and proposed four sponsor uh, sponsored projects his research interests are electro transfer studies electro catalysis self assembled uh, mono layers uh, microbial fluid cells etc Uh, have a great session ahead i welcome you sir to deliver your lecture thank you <clears throat> uh, thank you ma'am uh, for introducing me to the audience uh, of course very good evening to all of you uh, it's my pleasure to be a part of this fdb program uh, so first of all i would like to thank uh, the organizers uh, especially dr kirba ma'am for uh, providing opportunity for me to uh, share with you guys uh, what knowledge i gained over the period of my time okay uh, so i hope my slides are visible and my voice is clear uh, i'll i'll continue with my presentation straight away okay <clears throat> so uh, today i'll be uh, talking about multidisciplinary approach for the development of biomedical sensors okay so uh, how do i plan to take this uh, seminar is through the following first of all i would like to uh, talk where do i come from then i would like to highlight some of the uh, importance of nobel prize then i will go ahead and talk why one has to worry about doing research then i will introduce some of the classical book based definition of what sensors is all about then i will talk about my own research work in the area of uh, biomedical sensor okay on a, a very lighter note okay so why i put my uh, slide is where do i come from is because on um, one fine sunday morning i went for a haircut in a small town like uh, you know karaikudi and uh, the barber asked me in a typical tamil slang sir where do you work i said uh, i work in a, a place called sikri of course i did not say to him that i am a scientist 
so spontaneously he asked me a question do you guys make atom bomb so it was it was very surprising to me uh, but i realized that even people who live you know in and around karekudi do not know about what sikri is all about so from that moment onwards i decided wherever i go uh, whatever the talk i deliver the first slide would be where do i come from okay so for those of you who do not know about what sikri is all about uh, sikri profoundly known as central electrochemical research institute <clears throat> it is one of the constituent laboratory of csir the council of scientific and industrial research we do have three different sub units the headquarters is located at karaikudi uh, and we do have units at chennai and at mandabam okay so uh, apart from this of course we are uh, roughly about 400 employees out of which one third are scientists uh, even now sikri is the one and only research institute in india devoted to the field of electrochemical science and technology i repeat my sentence again even now sikri is the one and only research institute in india devoted to the field of electrochemical science and technology we are roughly about 7 decades old and we do work on fundamental aspect of looking at electron transfer across the interface to material de uh, design for uh, a uh, target applications we do fabricate prototype instrument and device uh, for multifunctional applications right so apart from this of course uh, we do have a very good analytical facilities and the one can find more details uh, in our website which is given below right if we look at the history behind uh, uh, sikri the foundation stone was laid in the year 1948 and it was uh, by then prime minister sri pandit uh, jawaharlal nehru ji and it was declared open in the year 1953 by uh, then president sri sarvapalli radhakrishnan uh, and of course the person who is standing next to him is dr batnakar who was the founder of csir and uh, the person who is speaking you know speaking in between these two is called dr aram alahapachetiya he is a, a well known philanthropist uh, philanthropist belonging to this part of tamil nadu in fact uh, he has donated Uh, uh he has donated 100 acres of land and 15 lakhs of rupees to establish an institute like sikri in 1950 itself okay now uh during the uh, inaugural ceremony of sikri uh, on 14 january 1953 this person was there of course you all know who is this person he is none other than the great uh, sir c b raman so he asked uh, such a question during the inaugural function you know what are these laboratories going to do unless otherwise the workers in this laboratory feel that it is up to them to do their very best otherwise these laboratories will remain as a giant question mark in the sky you know uh, i can imagine see if uh, if suppose you want to start a new department like let's say department of nano science and technology and you are inviting someone as a chief guest for the inaugural function and while delivering a lecture if that person asked you know why do you want to such uh, start such labor uh, such department when already there are plenty of uh, similar departments exist across india you know and how do you guys would feel about it the same feeling what sikrians had during 1950s but i am sure if raman would have been alive today he would have been more than happy to see what sikri has done over the past seven decades or so you know the sikri contribution towards uh, uh, nation growth as well as the concept towards electrochemical science and technology is enormous and i am sure raman would appreciate that i can give many examples starting from the corrosion prevention coating given to uh, bomben bridge which is the one connecting mainland of india to the island rameswaram and we have uh, developed the corrosion prevention coating for uh, bio uh, to prevent bio corrosion on the railway track and we are involved in developing iron selective electrodes etc etc and the recent addition being fabrication of 100 unit cell of lithium ion batteries which is a kind of make in india product so uh, the contribution of sikri both to the uh, nation building as well as to the electrochemical science and technology is really appreciable over the past seven decades of course i would like to spend at least a couple of minutes on talking about raman you know the moment i say uh, raman uh there could be couple of things which will strike in your mind you know 
The first one is Nobel Prize, of course. Uh, this is a month Nobel Prize uh, was announced for different six different fields. Uh, it was announced uh, every year during second week of October. And the award ceremony will happen in a place called Stockholm in Sweden. Except the Nobel Prize for Peace. For that, the award ceremony will happen in a, a place called Oslo in Norway. You know, and of course we do uh, celebrate Science Day every year to commemorate the discovery of Raman effect. You know, uh, Raman was the uh, one and only scientist who got Nobel Prize in the field of physics, of course, for the work he has done completely in India. Do you get me? I will again rephrase the sentence. Raman was the one and only scientist who got Nobel Prize for the work he has done completely in India. We do have several Nobel laureates from India. I will I'll show you the pictures a bit later. But uh, the work Raman carried out is, uh, is very significant, you know. And uh, he revealed the discovery of Raman effect on February 28, 1928. That's why we do celebrate Science Day every year on February 28. And for that, he got Nobel Prize in Physics in the year 1930, you know. Uh, so uh, the initial observations were uh, made visually by Raman. Of course, later on, the precise measurements were carried out using what is called a quartz spectrograph. And he has demonstrated the Raman effect during a famous lecture uh, he has given in Bangalore on March 16, 1928, you know. And this is the uh, demonstration he made public the discovery of Raman effect. Okay. Now, uh, these are the Nobel laureates, you know, uh, from India, I would say. As you can see, uh, in fact, the Nobel Prize, uh, Nobel Prizes were awarded usually to six different fields, physics, chemistry, physiology, or medicine, economics, literature, and peace, you know. And uh, Rabindranath Tagore was, in fact, the first Indian to receive Nobel Prize in the field of literature. And Sir C. V. Raman was the first scientist from India to receive Nobel Prize in physics in 1930. Uh, as you can see, there are many Nobel laureates, but, uh, but most of their work were carried out in abroad. Uh, but we do claim that since uh, by birth or by, you know, parent wise, they are Indians. We do claim that, of course, Indians get Nobel laureates. And the recent addition being, of course, Abhijit Banerjee in the field of economics in the year uh, 2019. OK, so why do I talk about this Nobel Prize is because, of course, we are the uh, faculties. It has uh, become our job to motivate our student. And we need to educate them about the uh, science as a whole and Nobel Prize uh, in particular. OK, uh, of course, uh, as far as I am concerned, basically, I'm a chemist. I do work on uh, electrochemistry as my major subject. Apart from this, I do take concepts from material science and biology to come up with sensors and devices mainly for energy and environmental applications and for uh, biomedical applications. Okay. So uh, as far as today's talk is concerned, I will try to highlight why a multidisciplinary approach is very essential for research nowadays. I would like to highlight the importance of electron transfer reaction and how do you, how one can modulate such electron transfer reaction to bring in applications in the field of, uh, let's say, biosensors, catalysis, and microbial fuel cells, etc. But today, I will restrict myself uh, only in the field of uh, uh, biosensors. Right. <clears throat> now, why one has to worry about doing research, you know? It's not like, uh, just like, uh, you know, we got other job. So we need to basically do some work to uh, to justify our salary. It's not like that. Basically, uh, it's about passion. Research is about passion. And uh, research alone can provide solution to these global issues. OK. If you look at this slide, here I have listed down the humanity's top 10 problem problems, which we will face in the upcoming 50 years or so. OK. As one can see, starting from energy, water, food, environment, poverty, terrorism, war, uh, disease, education, democracy, population, etc. Okay. I can give examples for each of this that it is going to be a problem in the upcoming 50 years. Let's take, for example, energy alone. Okay. So, uh, uh, 
thanks to you know uh, covid 19 we have moved from classical blackboard based uh, teaching to virtual online mode uh, based teaching you know for that of course everyone is using nowadays laptop mobile phones smartphones etc so uh, suppose if there is no power and you are uh, stored charge is very less what do we do it is going to be a big big problem so energy storage devices like batteries super capacitors and the energy conversion devices like fuel cells etc would become very very critical not just from the point of view of you know energy storage devices you take for example even fuel uh, so we moved from uh, using petrol to electric vehicle uh, you know india is planning to establish by 2030 all the vehicles in the road would be based on ev hybrid electric vehicles you know apart from this we are going to be digitalized you know what do i mean by digitalized do you know we never go to bank and write down you know uh, the slip to receive money or to deposit money we do use mobile phone based banking etc so for all these sectors energy becomes very very critical i'm not sure whether you guys remember about 4 5 years ago maybe in 2014 or 15 uh, in tamil nadu we had uh, about 14 to 15 hours of power cut you know remember we only have 24 hours a day out of which 14 15 hours of power cut we had uh, probably 4 5 years ago okay so that's why energy becomes very very critical since i am going to talk about uh, uh, mainly the biomedical sensors so highlighting the importance of disease also becomes very critical okay uh, let's say about 2 3 decades ago uh, suppose if someone gets a fever or something we do go to a, a single doctor and he would give us an injection or a tonic <clears throat> so that the next day you would become you know uh, you feel very uh, okay and you will start doing your regular activities but nowadays of course if you go to a doctor with uh, let's say a headache you know what are the questions they would ask uh they would uh, ask you to check whether uh, sir have you taken your ecg did you check your blood pressure glucose level etc you know meaning uh the microbes also changes its uh, structure and function depends on the environment what we look at so uh, identifying the disease becomes uh, uh, very very critical and for that we need to work out uh, the modalities and how do you diagnose the disease and how do you provide remedies to overcome such disease etc now <clears throat> apart from this uh, in 2012 the human population across the globe was estimated to be 6 billion and it is expected to grow roughly twice by the year 2050 okay so how are you going to provide them you know uh, for example good uh, green energy for them to live good drinking water clean environment for our generation to live all these things become a very very uh, uh, intriguing question mark so the answers and solution to these global issues could be provided only through science and technology you know and uh, the little steps uh, we make towards uh, providing solution to these global issues of course we can become self reliant and we can realize the dream of our honorable uh, prime minister sri narendra modi ji's vision which is self reliant india you know so that's where uh, people are involved now in doing research now uh, in case of uh, developing biosensors by adopting a multidisciplinary research approach it becomes very critical to understand how this chem bio interface work you know uh, meaning chemistry and biology interface let me ask a series of questions you guys don't have to you know answer just think about it Uh, and you would get the answer eventually uh, during the course of lecture right <clears throat> now uh, let's assume we all have a good food in the night you know and we go to sleep and who asked us to wake up in the morning maybe alarm or you know uh, mobile ringing disturbance from our spouse or uh, kids etc so you do wake up let's assume and you get ready after an hour or two you feel hungry right so why do you feel hungry right let's say you uh, uh, let's assume you take good breakfast and after that you go to a bus stand to catch a bus to come to university or a research institute and when you look at someone you feel very happy and when you look at someone else you feel very much irritated you know 
and all these things happen let's say with uh, within a matter of about 4 or 5 hours rather i am i'm trying to say that we express our emotion during this 4 or 5 hours you know all these things happen because of you would say biochemical reaction which occurs in our body i would go one step ahead and say that all these things happen because of electrochemical reaction rather electron transfer reactions which occur in our body when we talk about biochemical reactions <clears throat> some molecules should undergo oxidation some other molecules should undergo reduction to give you a product and the enzymatic reactions which occur in our body contributes to our activity you know so that's why the moment i talk about such redox reaction there is an electron transfer reaction involved and there are uh, uh, there is ion transport across the membrane all these things uh, correlate with uh, uh, chem bio interface that's why understanding such interface becomes very critical to develop any biomedical sensor devices uh, the typical example of a multidisciplinary research approach towards the development of device could be the glucometer which is available in the market you know i am sure lot uh, uh, many people would use that to check how much glucose is there in our blood uh, sample so what do we do uh, in order to uh, test how much glucose is there in our blood uh, sample we prick our finger take a drop of blood put it on a flexible uh, strip or a disposable electrode you know the moment you put the drop of blood you insert that uh, strip or flexible electrode into a device the device would give us a reading you know if you try to understand the basic principle behind how this device work that device uh, is a typical example uh, which is developed through a multidisciplinary research approach <clears throat> now there is an enzyme called glucose oxidase which is immobilized on top of the electrode surface the moment the blood sample comes into contact with that enzyme glucose oxidizes specifically oxidizes glucose to gluconic acid and hydrogen peroxide the moment you insert that strip into the device the device is nothing but an electrochemical instrument which will either oxidize or reduce hydrogen peroxide so that the measured current to provide an idea about how much hydrogen peroxide is generated through which you can indirectly correlate how much glucose is there in your uh, blood sample this is the basic principle behind uh, a uh, glucometer which is available in the market you know so if we look at that device as a whole electronics engineer would be involved in developing a device like an electrochemical device the flexible uh, strip is pro provided by an electrochemist and the process of enzymatic reaction could be a biochemical reaction you know so that's why uh, that device is a typical example of a multidisciplinary device developed through uh, adopting concepts from different disciplines you know now uh, let me spend again a couple of minutes on classical book based definition of what sensor is all about sensor is nothing but a device which converts either physical or chemical parameter into a measurable electrical signal you know in general uh, sensor comprises of three different elements like sensing element transducer and connected electronics like sensing element is nothing but your uh, uh, flexible strip in in case of glucometer the transducer is nothing but the enzymatic reaction and the connected electronics is your electrochemical device now this is a, a general flow chart of a chemical sensor let's say suppose you have a system in which uh, uh, a bioanalyte is uh, present so you want to develop a sensor specifically for that analyte you can pass through a filter through a recognition site that recognition site would pick up the changes in either ionic concentration changes in electron transfer rate constant or even number of electrons it could also detect changes in temperature in terms of heat change or light like polarization change etc so depends upon this parameter the transducer will pick up those changes and convert into a measurable electrical signal through connected electronics you know and in case of electrochemical sensor in particular again this is nothing but a device which interacts either chemically or electrochemically with the analyte but produces a signal that is monitored using electrochemical techniques you know 
when i talk about electrochemical techniques there are uh, much simpler uh, way to measure uh, changes like potentiometry for example uh, which measures directly the potential difference at the zero current meaning at the equilibrium state and the change in potential is directly correlated with the log of uh, concentration of the analyte similarly the other technique is like amperometry which measures directly the change in current at fixed potential and the change in current is again correlated with the concentration of the analyte uh, and in case of conductometry technique one can measure either the change in electrical resistance or conductivity and can correlate with the concentration of the analyte directly so these are all uh, kind of much simpler methods through which one can develop uh, a biosensor uh, the glucometer what i talked about which is available in the market works based on the principle of amperometry and the electrodes like ion selective electrodes na plus k plus ratio selective electrodes those things work based on the principle of potentiometry right uh, so when i talk about uh, sensors as a whole these are some of the characteristic a sensor should have uh, for example the sensor should be able to selectively detect the ion if i want to know how much glucose is there the sensor should provide the reading related to glucose alone it should not uh, you know talk about fructose sucrose etc it should be specific and it should avoid as uh, it should avoid the interference from other bioanalyte okay now uh, it would be very much useful if uh, uh, the sample volume what we need to detect an analyte should be very small and if the electrodes are sensing platforms are disposable reusable and renewable it becomes very handy and the response time of uh, such sensor should be very fast uh, and uh, it should be reproducible etc now in case of biosensors you know the molecular recognition element could be biomolecules like enzymes antibodies microorganism or as a whole cell itself one can use uh, as a molecular recognition element and depends upon uh, again uh, what are the parameters which induces change in terms of concentration the electroactive substance change change in ph change in temperature change in light in terms of polarizability or intensity change etc uh, also one can uh, detect mass change in terms of piece electric device so depends upon the parameter the technique is differs a uh, technique is different for uh, the transducer and ultimately all these changes would be reflected as an electrical signal uh, as an output in case of uh, device now uh, since i am going to highlight uh, most of uh, the development in the area of electrochemical biosensor i thought let me also uh, highlight uh, uh, maybe for a few minutes some of the basic concepts in electrochemistry <clears throat> you know uh, electrochemistry is a much much simpler way to understand many phenomena which occur uh, in the uh, interface which occur at the interface and also it provides a very simpler tool to understand the sensor and uh, the binding events you know binding of analyte to the receptor now uh, of course electrochemistry is a branch of chemistry which deals with study of electron transfer reactions at interface i highlighted uh, during early part of my talk why one has to worry about such electron transfer reaction you know waking up feeling hungry expressing emotion etc so that's why it becomes very critical to understand the electron transfer reaction now in general electrochemistry deals with two different kinds of reaction one in which voltage is applied to drive a chemical reaction and in the other case where voltage is generated because of a inbuilt chemical reaction uh for example the energy storage devices like batteries uh, super caps etc uh, uh you know uh, suppose you have a wall clock in your home the moment clock stops what do we do we simply change the battery and the moment you connect the battery the clock starts working right that is because because of the inbuilt chemical reaction associated with the uh, uh, material of a battery the voltage is generated and that is being used to uh uh you know uh, uh, that is been used to drive the clock now in the other case where one can apply a voltage to drive a chemical reaction let's say probably recent times you guys would have read in newspaper that uh, water could be used as a fuel to drive vehicle is it is it really possible to drive vehicle uh, using water uh 
the answer would be uh, no fundamentally but yes electrochemically okay so for example thermodynamically the water splitting reaction to hydrogen and oxygen is not allowed but one can tune the kinetics by applying a voltage so if we apply like 1.23 volt water could be split into hydrogen and oxygen and both could be used as a fuel to drive a chemical reaction so that's that's where the voltage is generated because of the spontaneous formation of electrical double layer at the interface so the moment you dip any conducting rod into an electrolyte there is a voltage developed uh, meaning capacitance arises because of this spontaneous double layer formation so c is equal to q by e and that's where the potential originates from now uh, the potential flows between reference and working electrode and the resultant current will flow between working and counter electrode usually uh, such kind of potential could be used to tune delta g itself you know based on gibbs free energy one can tune delta g from a spontaneous to non spontaneous and vice versa reactions just by applying a potential uh, through this relation you know uh, apart from the normal parameter like uh, you know concentration temperature pressure etc electrochemistry offers additional parameters like current or potential to tune this delta g that's where uh, electrochemistry becomes very very simpler of course uh, the current can come from three different modes of mass transfer like migration diffusion and convection out of these three modes diffusion is the predominant mode of mass transfer and all the equations in electrochemistry are derived based on the assumption uh, that the current arises from diffusion alone <clears throat> okay now uh, if you look at the techniques are concerned <clears throat> to monitor the binding events of sensor you know electrochemistry offers tool to understand the system at equilibrium near to equilibrium and far away from equilibrium now why do i worry about uh, such three different conditions is because let me tell you a small story for a minute or two then you will understand why i talked about electrochemistry and this technique let's assume suppose a student has got a, a gold medal during uh, his or her master studies okay <clears throat> uh, let's assume that person goes to the stage during the award ceremony receives the prize and comes to the other end of the stage suddenly some of his or her friends go and started to interact with the candidate you know and uh, how many of you guys think that at that moment that person would exhibit his or her real characteristics you know it's a very very uh, uh, big question mark at that moment that person would think that uh, he or she is the one and only person in the world who knows the subject uh, very much okay just because uh, that person is at the excited state they will not they uh, normally they won't express their real characteristics but in contrast <clears throat> when they come to classes regularly he or she may be a very uh, good obedient student uh, he or she may be very friendly very uh, good human being she or he or she may possess helping tendency etc so when do they express such characteristic only at equilibrium only at steady state that's why understanding the system at equilibrium or at steady state becomes very very critical then only you can understand the characteristic of the electrode electrolyte interface and that's where electrochemical techniques becomes very critical we do have techniques to understand system at equilibrium near to equilibrium okay like uh, transient techniques and far away uh, from equilibrium etc now uh, most of our research work also involved the use of nanoparticles i'm sure most of you guys would know Uh, classically we do have uh, metal semiconductor and the insulator we can distinguish by uh, you know defining conduction and valence band if we go on reducing the size of such materials one can end up with quantized the energy level you know and you would get a distinct band energy between the energy level and that's where uh, the concept of nanoparticles and quantum dots becomes very very essential Uh, one can define quantum dot uh, as uh, based on quantum confinement effect which occurs when uh, the size of such uh, smallest particle like quantum dots are smaller than their uh, bohr exciton radius you know and why these things becomes very critical 
the moment you keep on reducing the size of the material one would obtain very exciting properties especially in case of uh, uh, nanoparticles and quantum dots you would have, have a high surface area high surface to volume ratio and it depends upon the size of the uh, particle one can also obtain uh, very fascinating light emitting properties you know and fundamentally if you look at uh, such kind of uh, uh, particles or quantum dot you would have different energy levels so the light emission if it occurs from uh, the first excited or from the surface traps would give you surface defects etc would give you different emission wavelengths and that's where it becomes very very uh, critical <clears throat> now uh, coming to our uh, research area uh, of course i uh, have started my research working in the area of self assembled monolayer meaning which involves the formation of a single layer of molecule on the solid surface why such layers important it is very easy to prepare and this layer uh, can provide a medium to modulate electron transfer across the interface this kind of a single layer of molecule formed on the surface of electrode through spontaneous chemisorption forms an appropriate framework not only to investigate but also to modulate such electron transfer reaction okay why one has to worry about well the moment you modulate such electron transfer reaction one can create biomimic catalysis one can mimic both in terms of structure and the function of biomolecules on the electrode surface so that one can able to understand how that molecules behave and you can mimic the function and structure so that you can develop your own catalyst to carry out reactions bio catalyst to carry out reactions okay so that's where uh, creating a biomimic catalysis using a, a single layer like self assembled mono layer becomes very critical now uh, among uh, the many different sensors what we developed over uh, the past 10 years or so i would like to highlight only a few aspect relevant to this biomedical sensor you know one of the sensor what we develop is uh, for the detection of lipopolysaccharides <clears throat> why this molecule is important well uh, uh, this so called lps which is lipopolysaccharide is a human potent immune response system it will provide information about uh, immunity immune response of mammalian system in general okay so uh, of course it uh, it presents on the outer cell wall membrane of uh, bacteria you know and uh, if you look at the structure of this uh, we do have a long aliphatic chain we do have a sugar moiety and the functional groups one can target so that you can develop sensor for uh, this molecule why one has to worry about such molecule is because uh, depends upon the concentration let's assume uh, uh, for example suppose someone uh, met with an accident for god's grace you know he has been taken to uh, icu in hospital intensive care unit whether the patient would survive or not one can able to predict based on how much lps is generated from uh, from that patient you know initially it will lead to organ failure <clears throat> ultimately it will lead to what is called a septic shock which is nothing but cell poisoning of the body this molecule is highly toxic because of the negative charges which is associated on top of this uh, on on uh, top of this molecule okay but if you look at the structure one can develop a receptor for each of these component you know uh, Uh, what we uh, did was in fact using a self assembled mono layer what i showed earlier using hydrophobic interaction we anchored this molecule on top of the electrode surface and we developed a receptor for each of these components for example uh, we synthesized the compounds uh, specifically targeting phosphate groups and there are uh, some sugar binding proteins like lectins so that each of these receptors would go and bind to the structural component and thereby it reduces the negative charge and thereby it reduces the toxicity associated with this molecule so that we can develop a kind of pattern based recognition receptor and such kind of approach is much much better than the natural uh, binding receptor like polymixing b and one can monitor the binding events using simple impedance measurement you know Uh, since this involves a charge based interaction 
one can measure uh, uh, a parameter called charge transfer resistance meaning the resistance offered by your electrode towards any charge transfer process towards such binding events one can monitor so using this approach we have come up with a novel concept called complementary pattern based recognition receptors remember the structure what i showed long uh, hydrocarbon chain sugar moiety functional groups etc so each of these function could be assumed as a pattern and we create a receptor specific receptors for each of these pattern uh, that's how we come up with a complementary pattern based recognition receptor for uh, such kind of molecule and one can monitor using a simple impedance measurement <clears throat> now uh, apart from this uh, of course we designed the molecule the first one is a kind of strategy a methodology what we developed uh, for uh, fabricating a biosensor and one can develop a sensor through uh, preparing a molecule designing a molecule for example we designed the molecule in such a way that we do have a substrate binding domain and we do have a electron uh, spacer regime and we do have a metal binding domain so that the moment you anchor this molecule on top of the uh, electrode surface uh, compared to the uh, ligand alone the moment you introduce metals like copper or zinc that mediates electron transfer uh, much much faster than the absence of metal so we come up with another uh, new concept called metal mediated electron transfer so we have a system where if we have a ligand alone there is no electron transfer across the interface but the moment you introduce metal uh, you can modulate the electron transfer in fact metals like copper uh, enhances the electron transport across the interface roughly by 600 fold higher than uh, the absence of metal now what's the use of this well uh, suppose if we could uh, throw in anions which can go and specifically bind to copper or it can remove copper then we can develop sensor for that for example we do know from our classical chemistry based definition that cyanide can specifically bind to copper and it can remove copper so again by using uh, impedance measurement we have uh, developed a specific sensor for uh, cyanide alone <clears throat> now uh, so not only based on the designing of molecule or by fabricating a method once you understand how the electron transfer occur, occur across this interface and one can modulate that electron transfer by introducing nano materials like nanoparticles and quantum dots uh, different nano structured materials etc and one can uh, tune enzymatic reaction by introducing such kind of different nano structured material out of many different fascinating nano structured material we work on i would like to highlight uh, uh, the very uh, uh, maybe a uh, interesting one like uh, gold nano stars uh, the preparation of one is very uh, easy for example one can use what is called a template uh, assisted preparation you can mix a surfactant and water so you get a very uh, fascinating template like uh, liquid crystalline phase etc by playing around with the concentration of such uh, uh, surfactant and water along with the time duration one can get structures like uh, typical stars with a uh, high core and less arm and very sharp arm and with less core etc so that one can tune the sensitivity and selectivity of the sensor what we developed you know uh, maybe i i can talk about this for a while uh, i will skip few slides because of the time limit um, okay so uh, another approach what we come up with a very uh, is a very simple method through which one can develop <coughs> both uh, you know simultaneously both the fluorescent light emitting graphene quantum dots and re reduce the graphene oxide you know it's a very simple electrolysis method one can tune the emission color by cleverly choosing the reducing agent and the time duration of the electrolysis etc one can get emission like uh, blue yellow green right what's the use of it well we can uh, use uh, such kind of fluorescent material for bio imaging application one can target by functionalizing these nano materials and could be extrapolated this for the uh, uh, drug delivery applications too <clears throat> okay uh, maybe i will skip couple of slides so that i will wind up with uh, maybe another 5 or 10 minutes okay uh, in this sequence not only uh, the quantum dots 
we have also used the biomolecules to induce fluorescence in the nanoparticle for example uh, we used uh, an enzyme uh, called glucose oxidase and by using this fad um, uh, fad h2 redox process one can induce uh, the preparation of gold from bulk material to nano material and that can emit fluorescence and uh, that could be used for the uh, selective uh, detection of uh, cysteine etc and one can tune the emission color by changing with the ph for example if you go to an acidic ph it emits a rosy red fluorescence and if you go to an alkaline ph and such kind of nano material emits a, a, a green fluorescence you know and one can understand the characteristic where does it uh, where does such fluorescent emission come from and uh, uh, specifically one can uh, use the interaction of this uh, nanoparticle with that of target analyte for example here we have developed a, a fluorescent quenching based sensor for specific detection of amino acid like cysteine <clears throat> right now uh, that is about uh, designing a molecule and for material the recent work what we are doing is uh, developing a sensing platform itself you know uh, when i was a student of course my uh, teachers used to uh, take classes especially in american college of course they do take classes using a uh ohp sheets meaning overhead projector sheets those sheets are nothing but you know uh, polymer sheets flexible polymer sheets so what we did was uh, we have uh, chemically modified such sheets simply by electro deposition uh, one can tune the structure and in, and introduce selectivity and sensitivity for a sensor we demonstrated such electroplated strip as a sensor for glucose and a slight modification in the uh, uh, chemical method we formed a monolayer and deposited a zinc oxide over which using a silver uh, we introduced we developed a flexible strip based sensor for pesticide you know uh, 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 particularly this strip has been shown as a strength uh, sensor for the detection of methyl parathion you know this is the structure of uh, methyl parathion pesticide etc <clears throat> now uh based on that development what we are currently working on is we are working on the developing array of electrodes you know the initial strip what i showed is for the detection of only one analyte and if you can create an array simultaneously one can detect a multi analyte in a single platform what's the use of this well uh this is the current project what we work on right now of course it it involves the fabrication of multi analyte detection uh, uh multi analyte detection platform and the detection strategy were monitored using electrochemical techniques rather than using blood as a sample where one has to uh, use a invasive technique to take the blood out one can directly analyze the health uh, status of a person using sweat itself you know when i talk about sweat which is a very interesting scientific concept <clears throat> scientifically it is called perspiration you know under two different condition one would sweat uh, the first one is of course uh, temperature difference the second one is emotional changes you know the moment you entered into class and say that uh, suddenly uh, today there is going to be a surprise test and uh, you can observe that many of your students would start sweating you know or if someone attends the interview they will uh, sweat similarly if someone comes and proposes to you suddenly you would again feel the emotional changes and you would start sweating and interestingly under these two conditions the constituents of sweat is different and that provides a platform for us to analyze uh, the healthcare diagnostics okay the constituents of sweat are of course lactate urea glucose chloride na plus etc so one can use that multi analyte detection platform what i showed earlier and simultaneously you can detect uh, such kind of analyte uh, such sweat analysis could be extrapolated as a smart sensing platform both for defense and sports application maybe i will give you one example and you would understand for example we do watch olympics you know uh, for example let's say <clears throat> uh, an athlete who uh, participates in a 100 meter race how do we basically check whether he has uh, taken drug or not maybe uh, uh, we would collect his urine or blood sample just before the start of the race and after the race meaning at the end of the race 
and you would check is there any abnormal levels in the biomarkers like adrenaline level etc and uh, you know uh, usually this analysis takes very long time you would award the olympic medal etc and after 3 4 years you would say that uh, that athlete is tested positive or negative which is not a smart way of doing it right by then meaning during this period of time of 3 4 years that person would have earned lot of money he or she would have got lot of uh, sponsorships etc and if you want to strip off the medal that person would be happy to remove the medal and hand over to you rather that's not a uh, you know good approach rather if you can monitor while that athlete running itself the changes in the biochemical process or changes in the biomarker levels one can directly predict whether uh, he or she has taken any uh, you know uh, substances or not how do we do that of course they are going to wear fabrics etc we can immobilize we can anchor such kind of flexible sensors directly on the fabrics so that one can monitor uh, such kind of uh, processes okay maybe i will uh, take couple of minutes and wind up my lecture apart from this biomedical sensors the other area whatever groups focus is on the development of microbial fuel cells okay so in case of normal fuel cell of course we we know we use anode to oxidize the fuel and it will generate an electron flow and if you pass that through the external circuit you can generate an voltage output but in case of microbial fuel cell the in in anode chamber we grow microbes and that could be used to for specifically oxidizing fuel uh, why this is important well we can generate uh, 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 a small amount of power output a small amount of electricity by uh, uh, converting wealth from waste material let's say for example food waste or industrial waste like uh, you know sugar cane or uh, 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 biscuit industry etc when you grow uh, the uh, microbes <clears throat> on the anode chamber these microbes would use that food waste as a source meaning it will consume the food and during the biometabolic processes it releases electron and it gives you voltage output for example uh, a single uh, uh, cell would give me roughly roughly about 0.6 volt and if you connect two cells in series it will give you 1.2 volt which is sufficient enough to Uh, run a wall clock or a digital calculator, etc. Remember, I am not talking about generating a very high power output, but uh, we can uh, use an array of such fuel cells to add up the voltage and to generate high power, so that you can use a very uh, minimal power requirement devices. How do you correlate this with a biomedical sensor approach, which is very relevant? For example, we can use an enzymatic fuel cell. where from the sweat itself uh, sweat is nothing but a liquid right so you have a lactate glucose etc you can uh, use such enzymatic fuel cell approach to oxidize that uh, uh, fuel which is nothing but sweat and generate a small power output which is sufficient enough to drive you know run your pacemaker or to glow your uh, led etc so for this uh, this approach would be uh very very useful so these are some of the mfc configurations of course developed in our lab and finally to conclude uh of course uh, to develop such kind of uh, uh, bio sensors <clears throat> it is not sufficient if you are master in just one subject if you could take concepts from a multidisciplinary approach like uh, let's say uh, from material chemistry biology physics uh, or mathematics even etc one can develop a variety of uh, sensors and uh, catalysts for example so the hottest two field currently uh, one would like to involve in doing research is one is an energy sector and another one is a healthcare diagnostics okay so why do we uh, develop such kind of uh, sensors finally to come up with smart material and smart sensing uh, for uh, our routine life what do i mean by smart material Uh, well you would have heard about the advertisement of smart paints suppose for example there is a crack in your wall if you paint then that wall would automatically heal off you know so that's a kind of smart uh, paint what we talk about for example let's say uh, you are listening to me uh, for the past 1 uh, uh, hour or so 50 minutes to 1 hour or so so you get bored of my talk you know 
uh, what this guy Ganesh is talking about, uh, uh, you know, Nobel Prize, electrochemistry, sensor, material, etc. So you slightly lean in your chair and the chair understands that you are not interested in listening to me and it converts into a sofa so that uh, you can sleep aramse. You can sleep very comfortably. So that's the kind of smart material what I talk about. But remember, if the chair thinks that, uh, see, uh, this becomes very essential in order to motivate your student or it can be of help to your own research, etc. So that can prick you so that you would uh, become attentive and listen to uh, my talk very carefully. So that's the kind of smart material we talk about. Smart sensing is nothing but let's say uh, in the morning, why if you want to start your two wheeler, the moment you touch your accelerator, from the sweat itself, your speedometer will display, hi Ganesh, good morning. Today your blood pressure is this much and your glucose level is uh, this much, you are allowed to drive. You know, so that kind of uh, smart sensing uh, is not far away from uh, where we can reach. <clears throat> so that's the uh, kind of idea I would like to project in this talk. Of course, in order to do this, it is not sufficient if you are a chemist or a biologist or a, a material chemist for that matter alone. You need to take concepts from multidisciplinary approach and we need the multidisciplinary group effort to solve the uh, global issues and to provide solutions to that global issues what I described in the earlier part of my talk. So finally, I would like to uh, thank you all uh, for patiently listening to me. Uh, and uh, I would also like to thank the organizers for providing me an opportunity to share with you guys uh, what knowledge I have uh, in the field of electrochemical biosensors. So thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so let me probably come out of my presentation so that I can uh, look at the questions, if any. Yeah. Is it OK? The time is fine. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Even a small, small bit of information has shown your passion uh, towards the research. Really, it was highly interesting. Sure. Ma thank you. Thank you for the compliments. Yeah. <clears throat> so, I, of course, I would be happy to uh, answer any questions, queries, comments, or uh, suggestions. So far, no queries, sir. I think all the participants are uh, satisfied with your talk. Oh, <laughs> OK. Good. <clears throat> Mahama? Yeah, ma uh, Very good evening to everyone present here. First of all, we, the team, would like to thank the Almighty for the constant care, grace, and guidance. On behalf of the Department of Science, St. Joseph College of Engineering, we would like to express our sincere gratitude to our beloved chairman, Dr. B. Babu Manopran, sir. We are highly indulged by his performed leadership. Also, we would like to express our heartfelt gratitude to Managing Director, Mrs. S. Jesse Priyama, Director, Mr. B. Sashishekar Sir, our beloved principal, Dr. Vadi Seshagari Rao, and Dean, Dr. B. Parvada Vardini, ma'am, for all the enduring guidance and support on the absentia. Uh, from the depth of our heart, we thank our invited speaker, Dr. V. Ganesan, Principal Scientist, who have readily accepted our invitation with no second thought in spite of his busy schedule and enlightened the session with his thoughtful lecture. It's been a great privilege to have a speaker like you to share your perspective, sir. We feel the purpose of this uh, FDP have been accomplished because of your contribution in your specialized area. Our head of the department have been encouraging and very supportive throughout the planning and implementation of this FDP. We, as a team, would like to thankful to the convener, Dr. V. Nandri Devi Ma, who have been the driving force behind all phase of this program. I am happy to express my thanks to all the participants from various parts of the nation uh, world for the positive response to our invitation and distant participation. Thank you all for the encouraging support. Stay strong, stay healthy. Thank you one and all. We will meet you tomorrow by 4.30 p.m. So, so shall I shall I leave? It's okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank sir. you, ma'am. Thank you. Thanks for that. Yeah. Thank you.